You see this guy on OKC's bench? His name is Terrence Ferguson. And I'm telling you right now, he's gonna be the savior of the New York Knicks. And you're gonna find out what I mean like three minutes into this video. These next 15 seconds or the last 15 seconds I'm gonna mention of Carmelo Anthony for some time, but I have to provide some context of us just trading him because I don't know, it was significant and that feels like the right thing to do. So Melo is officially gone to Houston and now we have these new New York Knicks, if you will. Isn't it kind of funny how I traded the guy like two days before he actually got moved? Anyway, uh, Przingis, I mean the offense has got to run through him at this point. Hopefully 2K doesn't screw us over and he ends up averaging like 18 points a game because 2K loves to do that. I don't know why the hell it is, but they love to do that. Um, I'm going to do all I can because, I mean, the shot tendency. I bumped it up to 94 as a dog barks in the background. So I'm going to hope the Przingis is putting up like 25 points a game or something. Hardaway is also going to have himself quite a few opportunities to do his thing offensively as well. Creating his own shots, coming off of screens, shooting a whole lot of three-pointers, I would hope. I mean, I want these two to be the primary options. We're going to have it here. Przingis number one, Hardaway number two. What else am I talking about in this video? Because I don't remember. Oh yeah, Michael Beasley's going to start at the small forward position. I was contemplating between Bogdanovich, but given that Beasley's already been here, there's a chance he could actually remain here, and I just kind of like him more. Um, he'll be starting. Um, and out of nowhere, we're making another trade. So what the hell are you looking at right now? The one dude we're going to take back in this move is uh, Terrence Ferguson. This one came out of nowhere, I understand that. What the hell did I just do? I traded for OKC's recent first round pick in Terrence Ferguson, who has an interesting set of skills. Um, the three-pointer is not far away from being something. He can actually throw it down on dudes pretty effectively. And that sort of athleticism, it kind of intrigues me a bit. Also, defensively, he's not good, but he's not very far away either from being something on that side of the floor. And at 19 years old, Terrence Ferguson seems like something. And the lead up to this move was completely awful. Usually I, you know, like to build it up a little bit. This literally came out of nowhere. Um, he has played a total of two minutes for the Thunder all season, given that they have Paul George, Abrinas, Doug McDermott, Andre Robertson. I just don't know if he's ever really gonna get playing time for them. We trade for the dude, and I picture the dude starting not this season, but pretty early on. And I think he can grow into a great role player for us. And what the hell, we're actually not terrible. We're 20 and 25 after trading Carmelo Anthony. Um, don't be misled by Al Jefferson's stats. Those are his numbers when he was in Indiana. He has not played at all for us, but I guess the minutes still stay there. So don't think that I'm actually playing him because I'm not. But really, come on 2K. Can you just give me a 20-point score? Is it really that hard? Neil Akeen is making every single three-pointer he attempts. Well, 40% of them, but that's enough in the NBA. Our new guy, Ferguson, he's not making his threes as of right now, but he's also a rookie, so... Well, like Neil Akeen, so, you know, I'm willing to wait on him. A lot of his games kind of go like this, where he puts up six points, misses his three-pointers, and I have to assume his defense isn't that good. Here's, he's not far away, okay? I can picture him being a really good piece for us for a while. Now, we did have to take on Kyle Singler and his money, but it's really not that much. We gave up a second-round pick for the guy. I think it kind of worked out since OKC ain't using the dude. Uh, Neil Akina, he's still having an up-and-down season, as you'd expect for a guy in his rookie season, but he's having some great games. This one against Memphis could be his best one of the season, honestly. 20 points a game and... Shooting well from the field. He only had like four assists, which is actually what I expect from his rookie season. So, never mind. And I'm pretty sure I mentioned something like that in every single video for the dude. What intrigues me the most about Neil Akina is going to be his effectiveness as an off ball player, especially because Tim Hardaway Jr. has uh, handling abilities. And actually, we're going to talk about Tim Hardaway's uh, playmaking a little bit later on in this video. This is the kind of game that I sort of expect from him, though. More of a a low-key game, a mellow game, if you will, pun intended. Uh, the one assist could be higher, though, but Frank is doing okay by my standards. 
for his rookie season, okay? He's kind of having like a... Who was that rookie for the Knicks? Landry Field. He's having that sort of a rookie season for the Knicks as he does the Steph Curry three-point celebration that is starting to annoy the crap out of me in these highlight clips. But then against the Pelicans, he was awful. So that's what's going to happen when you're starting a rookie point guard. Sometimes they're going to have games where they just show all the potential they have and other times they're going to look like one of the worst players in the league. And that's just kind of what you sign up for. So... We'll just keep on keeping on with Neil Aquina. There's really no other option at that point guard position for us. Just keep letting the young dude figure it out on the fly, you know? And we're not terrible, so what? why not? Uh, Hardaway, this is about as efficient of a game as you can have. All of his made shots were threes, and then he had seven free throws as well. So it makes no sense whatsoever for the highlight to show him shooting a layup because he didn't make any layups or mid-range jumpers in this game. But I didn't notice his stats like that until I just saw it at this very moment. So we're going to look at these incorrect clips together and maybe we'll learn something at the end of looking at all these. We won't, but he had a good game nonetheless. The game that really intrigues me though was this one against the Grizzlies. He had seven assists. He also had three turnovers, but we're going to ignore those. That's interesting. I think Hardaway could grow into at least a not bad playmaker for us. He's definitely scoring first, about 15, 16 points a game he's averaging on the season right now. But if he can get himself to like four or five assists, then we could have a pretty dynamic thing going on, you know? Because you could have Hardaway creating offense for guys, Neil Aquina in time creating offense for guys. It could just provide us with a lot of options, and I like options. I like versatility. I like having multiple things we could go to. So yeah. And all of this, of course, is to cater to Przingis being our top dude. Hopefully 2K gets its act together and he starts averaging like 25 points a game. That's what I hope. Hopefully it happens. I don't know. They did the same thing to us in the Magic series. What? Well, I don't know. Um, we have one more potential trade in the works. It's Courtney Lee. Because, I mean, we could get something for the dude. Maybe we could get like a couple of second round picks. Maybe a first round pick from a good team. It's an idea with the dude. We're currently not that bad, which might actually be a bad thing because we want to get a higher draft pick. Trading Courtney Lee can make us a little worse. It's an idea. 